last little thing that I'm gonna record about my time here in Europe is how to make goulash. And goulash is a typical Eastern, uh, Eastern European, Middle Europe. It's a Eastern European dish um, that is my favorite dish that I ended up really liking for the two months I've been uh, in Prague and traveling around Eastern Europe. And this is our second time making it, so we're about to make it again. This will be my second time making it. And so I'm gonna just show y'all how to make goulash. Uh, you can make goulash like a soupy texture, or you can make it into like a stew type texture, right? And so we're gonna make it more of a stew type texture because it really fills you up. And we're gonna make enough for like four portions. And um, so here are the ingredients. You need potatoes, garlic, onion, uh, square cubes of beef. You can also use deer. Dan, uh, any other meat you could use? You can also use pork. You can also use pork, but it has to be chopped into like a square, right? Yeah. And then for seasonings, apparently Europeans use seasonings, but their American counterparts don't use seasonings all that much. But I don't even know what this is. What, what plant this is. So uh, I'm gonna have to put it in translator and post it at the bottom of the video. And then you need sweet paprika. You're also gonna need goulash seasonings. I don't know exactly what makes this whole season mixture, but I'm pretty sure you could look it up or order it online and get it shipped to your house. This one is similar to oregano, apparently, according to Wikipedia. Oregano, this is like oregano. Similar. Similar to oregano, okay. And then this is tomato paste. Tomato paste. And then you got pork fat, right? Pork fat. Oh, why is it leaking? Pork fat. And the most important ingredient <laughs> is beer. Specifically dark beer, because I know dark beer goes well with beef. And then bread, of course, to eat it with. So yeah, we're about to start making this goulash. Got all your ingredients, you wanna prep them. So you wanna chop up some normal size uh, potatoes, because... Fuck, I fucked it up. All right, so once you have all your ingredients, you wanna prep them. And so you want to cut up some onions, cut up the garlic, uh, cut the beef squares or whatever meat you decide to use, beef, deer, ostrich, I hear. You can chop it up into even smaller pieces so it cooks faster. And then you want to cut some potatoes, you want to cut them really small. And then you also want to cut them like normal size squares because the really small ones are going to dissolve to make it more thicker and then towards the end you're going to add the other potatoes to add more texture to the goulash. You want to add this pork fat in here so it can start to melt and once it's all melted down then you're going to put the um, onions and garlic in there so they get golden brown and then we'll start adding the other ingredients. So once the fat has melted down to like a boil, you want to of course dice up an entire onion and throw the entire onion in there until it gets golden brown. Then you add the garlic. The reason you want to put the onion in there first is because garlic cooks faster and you don't want to burn the garlic. Uh, so you gotta let the onion get brown and then you add the garlic in there. So once the onions and garlic are golden brown, you wanna add tomato paste in there and stir it up. After the onions 
and the garlic and the tomato paste gets brown once you stir it for about a minute or two. Then you want to add the beef in there and then start stirring it all together. And then after that, you want to add seasonings, the sweet paprika. Paprika. Oh, I can't say it. How do you say it? Paprika. Paprika. Sweet paprika in there. And then the goulash seasoning. See, they do use seasonings in Europe. It up. We add about a half a cup of like boiling or warm water in there. You don't really want to add cold water in there because it lowers the temperature of the dish and it can make the meat kind of rubbery. But after you add the water in there, you also want to add the little diced up pieces of potato in there. And so now we're going to kind of let it sit for like what an hour or two for until the meat so that the meat can cook. And as the meat cooks, it's gonna you know, shrink, it's gonna let out its juices as well. And then, of course, towards the end, we're gonna cook it on high with the top off. Top off. <laughs> with the top off so that the water can leave it. So. Goulash does take a while to make. It takes like three to four hours. So after we put everything in there, you got to kind of check it maybe every 15-20 minutes and make sure that it keeps enough water in it. So you have to add warm water or boiling water because if you add cold water, it lowers the temperature of the entire dish and slows the cooking process down. So over the hour to two hours, we've been adding water. We also added potatoes once we realized the meat was cooked. So these potatoes won't dissolve. See the little potatoes we put in there so they dissolve to make it thicker. But these bigger potatoes, they'll dissolve a little bit but they'll be in the actual stew so you can actually eat them. And we added beer. Like I said, porter. Yeah. Putting the porter in there. And really, once it's like completely done, like maybe the last couple minutes, we'll add this in there to give it a little bit more spice to it. And we'll add a few more bits of garlic in there. Cause I like it when it has that garlic flavor to it, so. And then on the top you can put fresh onions. Yeah, then we also add fresh onions. And then here in a little bit, I'll also get the bread out and uh, add some butter to the bread put it in the oven because goulash is really good because you like dip your bread in there and like scoop up the beef and stew and potatoes and put in your bread and eat a lot of carbs. I've gained a lot of weight since I've been here in Europe so yeah. I'm gonna take the Myron. So then you wanna take this spice, put it in your hand rub it together. It kind of looks like wheat. Yeah, it's like the last thing you gotta put in there. It's official. The, the goulash is done. You know, the last probably 30 minutes of the three to four hours making it, you know, you definitely want to taste the meat and make sure, you know, it's cooked to your liking. Also have toast because it goes great with toast. So yeah, that's how you make goulash. So I'm about to eat this and call it a night. So hope you like the video. Like, share, subscribe. It's also a very Eastern European tradition that when you eat goulash, you have to have it with the beer. But not not Irish beer. But yeah, not not Irish beer. Usually with an Eastern beer like a Pilsen, a Pilsner, or 
uh, pale ale or something. Uh, what's what's some what's some Eastern European beers besides Pilsner or Kale? Czerny mm, Kozel. Yeah. Budweiser. Sharish. Yeah, yeah, all all that what you just heard. But my beer choice is Guinness Extra Stout. It's gonna go great. Great stuff.